Major funding for CFO Studio is provided by Real Estate Strategies Corporation, advisors to CFOs, management, and boards of directors in the acquisition and disposition of leased and owned real estate. Visit www.realstrat.com. Hi, this is Andrew Zizas, your host at CFO Studio. I'm joined today by Stephen L. Ford, CFO of TradeCard, Inc. TradeCard is a software-as-a-service cloud provider. Mr. Ford has more than 20 years' experience as a finance executive for software, technology, and service companies. Steve's here today to talk to us about a very interesting topic. Cloud computing is no longer in the cloud. Steve, it's great to have you here on CFO Studio. Andy, thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, cloud computing no longer in the cloud. I don't know about you, but my experience has always been that when someone's head's up in the clouds, it's not a positive statement. So, tell me about the whole concept of cloud computing. What are we talking about? The whole concept of cloud computing, Andy, is, is really about massively scalable resources being delivered over the internet. What's happening today is been happening for over 10 years. However, the marketing of the word cloud by Microsoft and others is really where you start to get this idea. Is this just some hype or is it something real? And if it is real, what is it? Okay, so, so, so break it down for me. Cloud computing is a term. Uh, it's about services that are being delivered via the internet? Yes. So we're talking about software as a service delivered over the internet. In a nutshell, that's cloud computing. That's cloud computing. And there's other areas that are important to understand. There's infrastructure as a service also, considered cloud. There's platform as a service. Infrastructure would be like renting a server from IBM or multiple servers. Platform would be Google Apps interacting on a document at the same time from multiple locations. Again, all through the internet. Okay, got it, got it. So from a CFO's perspective, why all the hype? Why is cloud computing important? CFOs today are really in a unique position. They're managing resources that have to do with information. They have to do with being able to meet the demands of the business. All of these things have been historically done with installed on-site software. That's no longer all that's available to them. Mm. So an analogy would be if you were going to provide electricity to your home, would you rent a generator or would you call the utility company? CFOs have typically been renting a generator for everything. That's now changing. That's a great analogy. I, I got it. I got that. So for CFOs who are not as knowledgeable as some, what steps should they take to acquire knowledge about cloud computing and its applicability to their companies? I think the most important thing for CFOs to keep in mind today is that there is, in fact, a lot of information out there. There are studies that have been published by FEI and TradeCard jointly, a user's guide to the cloud. And what does that really mean? You, as a CFO, are the prime target, the prime user. And this has to do with primarily private clouds as opposed to public clouds. Public clouds such as Yahoo, Google, everyone understands that. But the private clouds, the services such as financial statements, uh, Salesforce information, purchasing information, other things are available through the cloud today. Okay, so now you referenced an article that was published by TradeCard and FEI. You were talking about Financial Executives International. Yes. Um, for our viewers, repeat the name of the article. It's called the User's Guide to the Cloud, and it's really targeted to CFOs. One way they can start to learn, what is this service? How do I take advantage of it? What are the pitfalls? What are the considerations? What's the ROI? How do I really evaluate it correctly? Excellent, excellent. Let's talk about various applications. I know you touched on it a little bit. Are we just talking about Salesforce automation when we're talking about the cloud, or are we talking about other applications as well? It's actually interesting because as it now stands, there isn't a single application that isn't available for the cloud. There are some that have been out there for a while. Salesforce.com and Salesforce and CRM, customer relationship management systems, have been around for a while. Also, financial systems, when it comes to preparing your financial statements, how would you like to do it with 30, 40, 100 versions of your software around the world, or one in one location that everyone can hook into through the internet? So there are no limitations? 
as it now stands, there haven't been any limitations. I think there's a limitation in terms of imagination and execution, but there's no technical limitation yet. So anything, any type of software that exists today either is or could be delivered by the cloud? I would say that's a true statement. And what's interesting also is that there are new applications that are coming up all the time. So there's areas that are well established that every CFO understands, but there's new areas that have to do with providing data and analysis and, and business information that you can draw from a public cloud, you can draw from a private cloud, you can become a member in these various clouds. It's really important that a CFO starts to learn and understand how that works, how it can work to their advantage. Okay, so let's talk about how CFOs should evaluate cloud because CFOs as an industry are a very diverse bunch. On one hand, you've got some CFOs who are incredibly progressive, cutting edge, out in front, leading the charge. And then you've got other, the other extreme of CFOs who are more traditional, uh, steeped in doing it the way they've always done it, and everything in the middle. So how can a CFO evaluate the applicability of an application, whether it should be cloud or non-cloud, in, in his company's best interest? It's an excellent question and, and one that uh, we deal with all the time as we provide our services and as a CFO, I look for services myself. Yeah. And so I think the most important thing, first of all, is you need to understand what is the application, what are you trying to accomplish, all the basics need to be there. And then what is the ROI on what you do now understand and know today? Then you've got to take that one additional step that says, all right, where else can I find out about this and how else can I avail myself? Outside consultants and auditors can help direct you, but it's still up to you because there is a lot of information out there today, Andy. I got to believe there's a lot of information, but I would also believe, like other industries, there's a lot of purveyors of information that are not necessarily the folks to be paying attention to when you're a CFO. Yes, it's very true. You have to be discerning, and I think it's there's a lot of hype associated with cloud right now, too, and, and you as a CFO really need to know exactly how your data moves today. It's surprising how many CFOs are not aware how much of their information is actually going through the Internet today. If you send an email with an attachment, do you really know all the stops it makes along the way to its receiver? it's important that you start to understand your information flows in the company that you're the CFO of and also what type of software you currently have. So if you really understand where you are today, it becomes much easier than to apply new knowledge to how you want to move forward. So an email is actually a great example of a cloud-based communication. Yes. And your comment about understanding the stops is mm -hmm. not one, I'm sure, from a technological perspective as much as it is from a data security perspective and a compliance perspective and all the other perspectives that a, a rock solid CFO has to take into account when managing to protect his company. Yes, that is such a critical point, Andy. And what's really interesting is that cloud providers today that are well steeped in understanding those security matters and making sure they know the regulatory issues movement of data across borders, all those things, it may be a surprise to a CFO today when he starts to look at how well thought out and how well prepared compared to what he's doing today, which he would view as being safe. So on some levels, I don't think a CFO has a choice anymore in the age of the internet. This is something that, th this isn't something that they'll get to. This is something that at the very least from a risk management perspective, if not a technological progressive perspective, it sounds like every CFO of a company of any size whatsoever needs to be taking this into account. Yes, very much. And, and what's really interesting, Andy, is that the CFO is the one person at the center of all information moving within a company, whether it be small, mid-sized, or large. Mm -hmm. Also, that's the individual who has access to that data and is able to redirect it and repackage it and reformat it and analyze it. So it's critical that the CFO really does take the lead and be able to move the ball forward in this area. Security is important, efficiency is important, uh, being able to provide the needs of the business is important and also become a strategic leader because the information flows that are underneath the control of the CFO are actually going through the cloud today, yeah. and they don't always have complete awareness of that. They don't have yes. Steve, this is a fascinating topic. We're almost out of time. I yes. think I have time for one more question. Certainly. Um, 
let's kind of summarize. So it sounds like cloud is not new, although some people will tell you it is. What's the future of cloud computing? I look at the future of cloud computing to be unlimited. I believe that it's very bright, it's very pervasive, and technology will only continue to improve the ability of information to move in a virtual fashion through the internet. And in fact, I would predict that it will become quite common as a cell phone is today. As common as the cell phone is today? Yes. Well, we heard it from Steve. Steve, thank you very much. This is fascinating. I, I hope you'll come back and see us again. I'd love to. Here. This has been great. I appreciate it very much. Thank Thanks you, Thanks for Andy. being here. You're welcome. This is Andrew Zizos with Steve Ford of TradeCard saying thank you for watching us at CFO Studio. Major funding for CFO Studio is provided by Real Estate Strategies Corporation, advisors to CFOs, management, and boards of directors in the acquisition and disposition of leased and owned real estate. Visit www.realstrat.com.